so rather than just saying that i do this i want to do this i will do this i will make an impact just try to you know prove it by actually doing you have to have your own story okay like people they tend to you know google and just copy paste and stuff hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel so over the past few years we have seen that there have been lot of mentorship and scholarship programs that come each year wherein we get to meet a lot of professionalists and technologists one on one with them which is indeed a great learning experience now in order to get shortlisted in these programs you have to fill up a form that is called an application for that particular event now today in this video we want to discuss about how to make your application stand out in the crowd and also about how to write essays get recommendation letters and proofreading and all of that so my basic motto of making this video was to let you know how to make your applications look like how should you should write your essays what are the tools and tips that you can keep in mind while submitting the applications for such programs so if that interests you and you want to know the same please make sure that you watch it till the end and do not forget to please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel so today we have with us a talented guest she has been selected as the gsc that is commonly known as grace hopper celebration scholar twice Also, not just that, she has been also the VIA, that is Women in Cyber Security Scholar, and also is a technical writer at Geek for Geeks. So I'm happy to call upon Vani Gupta. Hey, Vani, thank you so much for accepting the invite. Hi, guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for accepting the invite. So it would be really great if you could introduce yourself in your own words. Yeah. So, hi guys. My name is Vani, and I'm currently a final year student at uh, University of Hyderabad. I'm pursuing my master's in computer applications, and I'm also working as a platform intern at a Bangladeshi startup called Hiwa. So, yeah, I've been into a lot of uh, fellowships, scholarships, competitions, and I think I'm qualified enough for this. Thank you so much, Vani. Uh, I think uh, without wasting any time, we should start with the question that I have got for you. so that uh, we can have a crisp and clear idea about how to fill up these application the first question that i have for you is what do you think uh, how are we evaluated for these mentorships and the scholarship programs that we have okay so the thing is i have also like rather than uh, receiving the scholarships i've also mentored and uh, like selected the uh, like resumes and uh, essays and like uh, for scholarships uh, like i was there for ncwid uh like i just i reviewed a lot of scholarships for them it is basically national center uh, for women and information technology which is a us based um, non profit organization and it helps underrepresented groups in women uh, to get into technology so i reviewed a lot of scholarships for them and the thing is uh the thing is like a lot of essays are pretty repetitive and they just want to you know they just wanted to show that you are the best in all so the thing is you actually lose the individuality and the originality what you have as an individual so rather than just saying that i do this i want to do this i will do this i will make an impact just try to you know prove it by actually doing so the thing is like rather than just saying i will be a part of this club i will uh, like uh, like win this competition or something actually win this and then uh, you know apply for the scholarship so one thing is this and another was like i was a judge for an uh, for a hackathon a uh, hack mit which is an annual hackathon held at massachusetts institute of technology so for there as well i had one point like people make it a lot more technical and a lot more complex so like people who are reviewing your application your project they are not only in tech but they also want wanted to see you know what is unique in your project not just the technical parts so i think that is a bit you know like bring what you have different to the table and also just do not make it very complex so that normal you know you can explain it in layman terms to normal people that is what i have exactly yeah yeah i think being authentic and telling yeah. what you have already done instead of telling what you want to do and you know making up some stories behind that i think yeah. telling what to do is important but then what you have done before is either more important to tell your authenticity over here right yeah exactly that, that proves a lot okay so we'll move upon to the next question that is 
so as you said that in these applications essays are so very important right what are yeah. the tips you would give over here on writing essays to make it stand out and win these scholarships and mentorship programs okay so i'll start like i've written a dozen of uh, uh, essays for a lot of scholarships and one being grace of a scholarship like they, they receive around thousands of uh, like essays and then they have to filter out for a few hundreds so one thing i feel is you have to have your own story okay like people they tend to you know google and just copy paste and stuff but i feel you have to have your own story why do you want this and what will you like what impact will it make on you and how will you try to carry it out forward for gca the main theme is you know like empowering women in technology because we have you know especially in india we see that yeah, yeah, you know exactly yeah so that is what so i was already a part of a lot of uh, groups like women in agile and tech uh, women in cyber security so that was one thing that i think that could have been a standout point in my essay and apart from that i have proven in terms of technical skills like winning a lot of uh, competitions uh, like national levels uh, competitions like cap gemini tech challenge and like university levels and state level competitions in cs Uh, apart from that uh, i think your academic record must also be a bit important because of course if you're applying for a csp scholarship they want to see you like uh, how much do you know about it I and know. one and one tie breaker i feel is the recommendation from a lecturer so gsc emphasizes a lot on what your professor or the person who has directly taught you has to say about you so definitely uh, i'll say that like i was pretty uh, you know enthusiastic in all my cs classes and that was one point uh, the letter of recommendation and for the essays i feel uh, definitely you have to have you know something unique you have to, you have to have proven yourself and yeah you have to have your own story yeah that is what i have to say about it i think when the student writes something in the form of story it's very easy for the one to read as well And relate yeah. to that story because stories are not relatable. Yeah, <laughs> so right. I think uh, when it's written in stories rather than in just points, I did this, I did this, and I went to this and all. So it, stories are more effective. Yeah. On right. that note, um, a lot of people kind of you know misinterpret writing essays with the use of jargons, and they think that if you they use jargons and difficult words and you know lavish language, they would get selected in uh, their essay. So what's your point of view on that? is difficult was you know using language with jargons good or simple english was works as well okay so the thing is for reviewing essays there are a lot of people who review like not only people from technology but uh, uh, from the industry but also students and professors and a lot more you know people they have backstage yeah yeah so yeah. the thing is what if you write these jargons and you know it will only break the flow of the essay like they'll have to you know they they won't get the gist of it if you write some complex words they have to google it or you know find it in a dictionary or stuff that won't make it you know like a flow but it'll break a lot in between so i'll definitely not recommend something that is not very important if you can use simple words except that i'll i'll definitely you know go for that right i think a lot of people kind of misinterpret because i think uh, these professors the people who are actually judging uh they also don't have much time to you know go back to dictionary yeah. and searching up words of what the person has written and then yeah. when uh when everything is in the form of story and a good flow then i think when jargons and words like that which is not used very very often it kinds of uh, you know adds as a breaker to the story as well right yeah right exactly i i actually second you on that point on that note the next question that i have for you is now uh, we have lot of tools these days right for writing as you are also a technical writer at gfg yeah want to know that what tools would you suggest to the people to use while writing the essays or any article of okay. that sort yes so for me it will be like pretty basic because uh, for both the years in gfc i just opened a google doc because you know for that grammatical errors and mistakes it, it points out and another tool i use uh, is a plagiarism checker online because i don't want that people to you know say that it's been copied from the internet yeah. so that is yeah so for me it was just either a uh, microsoft word google doc or uh, or the plagiarism checker but you are definitely like you can use uh, grammarly and stuff but as as we discussed earlier in the previous question definitely just try to avoid googling 
uh, heavy terms that you wanted to inculcate in your essays that would not be you know pretty good it it does not look very uh, like that it has been written directly by you you want it to be more relatable so i'll definitely say just use simple words and go with your flow and just check for grammatical errors and plagiarism i think that should be enough i for me i don't use any more tools and stuff and fancy stuff like that right right i think uh, also one more thing i think apart from writing up the essays getting it reviewed and you know proofread yeah. with someone who has been a previous scholar is also too important on that what's on what are your yeah. thoughts on that yeah so like uh, i am pretty busy on the week uh, weekdays because i'm working as an intern and i also am uh, like uh, doing my uh, masters so the thing is i definitely review like a lot of people uh, tend to you know go back to previous scholars because they can actually because you've been selected and you know right what is important what is not and if it's like up to the mark because it's an inter international level uh, conference so uh, yeah i do that on weekends so the thing is definitely you have to get your essay reviewed i've i've helped a lot of uh, uh women uh, to you know get uh, the gsc scholarship for the last year because i reviewed a lot of applications on the weekends so i think that is an important point and definitely you should try not just uh, to review it like get it reviewed by one person but try to get it reviewed by like five or six uh, past scholars so that you can get a gist of what everyone thinks about it right. rather than just moving into a single direction exactly exactly that that is a very crucial point that you said ki kisi ek se don't go for just one or the yeah. one one scholar and then you know i got it reviewed and then you're sitting back go and get yeah. it reviewed by at least five to six people so that you can go and collect all the thoughts and then yeah. use your own mind to actually review that whole essay yeah right. that was a, that was a great point that you added okay so i have this one more question that what kind of tips would you suggest to the people while submitting these applications so we talked about essays we talked about reviewing what in general would you say for these applications you know that uh, people kind of turn up so in a lot of like, applications there are essays but apart from that we have other things as well right what are the things yeah. would you suggest uh, to the people in that sort okay so i think for that like i've i've written a lot of essays half of them got rejected uh, got rejected like let's say for let's take an example for mlx uh, fellowship okay so i filled a form for that I, my essays got selected but i got out in the interview process so the thing is initially you have to show that you're technical of course that you are a deserving candidate they they just don't want you know waste to see it on someone who just says that i'll do this i'll do that so you have to show that what you have done in the past and what you're planning to do how are you going to take it forward for me it was like uh, there is a community called codo sapiens at university of hyderabad and i was like a volunteer in that so for me it was mainly because like uh, we have a lot less uh, women in cs in our college so what i wanted to do was like after receiving the conference scholarship i wanted to what i learned from the scholar, like what i learned in the two or three day event i wanted to pass it on to my peers and other juniors and all those women i get to interact with in the it industry so that was a very strong point because i could carry out their message forward so it was in their interest like you know if i like if they give one seat to me so i'll be able to you know pass it on to like 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 let's say 10 or 15 more people so you have to get the idea of why do you why do you think that you're uh, like you'll get selected you have to think from their perspe perspective rather than just yours so that was one uh, pretty important point and for mlh i think i pretty like my essays were pretty solid because it was just just pure technical uh, my projects and internship past experiences but the thing is um, i i really didn't understand the motive behind uh, their uh, you know shortlisting so i couldn't get through it uh, apart from that in uh, women in cyber security i was awarded a us based scholarship like travel expenses and lodging and stuff uh in us itself but i couldn't go due to india's uh, travel restrictions due to covid so for me at that point of time i think i was selected because uh, they had like again it was more like we have a lot a lot less women in cyber security even when you compare to like cs you know cyber security is a pretty small part so what i was like i was i wanted to have a club you know where we in our university where i can you know discuss and play uh, those ctfs and stuff we have in cyber security so that was one point i thought that uh, was pretty important uh, during the application and the other one was like i had 
uh, I had a proof for them that I have written something and it was actually selected as a poster as well in the conference. So that is what I think is you have to prove yourself and you have to understand what their motive is. If they want to give you the seat, how will you utilize it to like, carry it forward? So that is what made the difference. Right, right. I, I actually uh, I get, get the point that you said, you know, that uh, we have to actually put ourselves in the shoes of them. Yeah. So what will they actually think of us when we're writing up something or writing up the application or something of that sort? Yeah, I think that was a great addition to the point. I have another question for you. Uh, what would you suggest? So a lot of people have this question in mind, ki hume, uh, you know, from where do we have to get our recommendation letters? Do we have to get yeah. from a person who is actually teaching us or who is actually in touch with me right now? Or it can be from before past years as well. So something on that sort, if you can tell us ki what kind of recommendation letter expects, you know, what's the content to be written on that? in the perspective of the teacher as well. A second point I want to know also that from which kind of teacher should we get this recommendation letter? Okay, yeah. so I have one now pretty interesting point about that. So I was very like, I was very keen on filling the GHC and you know, I think I made it in the first shot, like uh, in the first year itself, like I filled the application, I got selected. I was, it was not that at that point of time that I had thought to fill the application, but way before that. So I was like pretty sure like I have to go there, you know, I have to meet a lot of people and women from the industry and stuff. So I started planning that way beyond that. Like uh, when I got into US, it was my first year there. So there was this uh, professor who taught me uh, like basics in programming. You know, we have that thing in the first semester, right? So I was I was the one who sat uh, in the first seat in front of him. I was the, I was the one who was pretty enthusiastic, asked a lot of questions. Uh, I also volunteered for a side project. Like we we didn't have to do that uh, that semester for some practical stuff, but it was completely voluntary. I did that. I completed the project, and that is you know that is where I think he thinks he started thinking that I was that one person uh, that who could do you know something in the university and like uh, so that was. That was my main motive, you know, uh, to get him think uh, like that for me. And that would definitely uh, be seen in the letter of recommendation. So the thing is, uh, the students are not allowed to see the letter of recommendation. A direct right. link is sent to the professor. And then he is the one who is completely responsible for that. So I left it completely in, in his hands. And I was pretty sure that uh, it is going to be very solid because I already had a pretty good and a very bold impression of me on him. So that is what you can follow. Like if there is, you want to fill an application, just not, you know, just start just few days of, of back, but go a little, like start preparing for it. A few months is, you know, a little, yeah, a month, weeks should be fine that you want to create a good impression on a teacher or something that would make a huge difference. Okay. Uh, so my first part of the answers is completely answered, right? Ki hume, yeah. How we have to actually find a teacher. So yeah. would, should a teacher be actually in touch with me right now while filling up the paper, or, you know, filling up an application or it can be from a past, uh, you know, past schools or colleges of that sort as well. If you can, uh, you know, um, tell us that yeah so on that i think uh, the application itself mentions that you know there are different applications and they may allow like for me i'm currently pursuing my masters and i got ghc in my masters so i i think uh, it should be mentioned there that like, if i was you know eligible to have a teacher from my bachelor's or if i'm only allowed to have a teacher or a professor which is currently uh, like teaching me or something so i think it depends on the application itself I'm not pretty sure on that Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the next question that I have, that is, that will be the last question that I'm going to ask you for the today's uh, discussion. That is, uh, could you please tell us about how exactly do we, you know, start up an essay that we write and, you know, come up to the end. So for example, if I have this question key, you know, tell me about that. How are you going to impact about this and this, uh, you know, the event or something, uh, in your own community or something like that so if if that was a question or any question of that matter how would you how do you actually start up writing and then come into the middle of the essay and then conclude an essay so if there there is something like that if you can tell us that first yeah. thing that you told was a kind of a story okay you have to write it yeah. of a story which actually links all the three paragraphs and then you conclude at the last 
yeah but if you so, tell me how to actually start yeah yeah so for me like initially mine was like a pipeline you know a data flow pipeline initially i started with how like where i was born i'm just explaining a bit about myself so the person can relate to who i am as a person now uh, you can start with like where were you born what were your education educational qualifications and why like just start building up the story a bit and then start with the bold points and you definitely do not want to end it with a pretty you know boring something so you just you have to start a little small and then build up something at the end and then some solid punch line at the end so that is for me for me like i i broke the essay into two parts i started um, like a, a slight description about me and my background and my family and stuff after that my education like the second part was my bachelors i went into my bachelors explained all the achievements i had what i had done for the community and people and then i started writing for my masters in like the current scenario where i am so the person could actually you know make a flow out of my whole life uh, so they could you know relate a lot more so that was what and then i just simply punched it with like what impact will i make if i be the scholar so there is where you know they think like okay if we give this person the scholarship we definitely have something profitable in case of that although it's a non profit organization but the profit will be spreading the word about it and helping other right. women in technology so that is what like build the story from small ground up and then just go to the end and do like till the present scenario where you are exactly i think that was a very great point that you added ki start from the beginning make a plot out of it and then yeah. you know keep on telling what were your struggles what were, what did what did happen in between and then how did you overcome yeah. that and then move ahead and then get, give a punch line in the end so that it is you know very very relatable to the end ki this happened yeah. okay this is very nice this is very yeah. apt and somehow the reader also gets into the you know flow of whatever we are kind of writing i think yeah, that right. was a great that was a great addition thank you so much vani thank you so much i think you answered all of the doubts that commonly people have because they are kind of struggling they go to a lot of people ki sahi hai this is right or not this yeah. is right or not but then if we, they get a crux of what actually they need to write and what actually they need to think while writing that is yeah, more right. important thank you so much vani thank you uh, for coming up i think a lot of my audience have actually got up this uh, problem solved today itself Thank you so much for coming. Thank you Mansoor for having me.